Excellent. Time now for SecureWorks Director of Detection Research, TJ Nelson. He's going to take the floor for a conversation about visualizing threats through tactic graphics. He's with me here in person. TJ, good to have you. How are you? Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> of course. So we've got your slides behind you. You know what you're doing. You know the drill by now. You guys are comfortable in here. So I'll hand you the floor. This is yours. Definitely. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is TJ Nelson, and today my talk will be about visualizing the threat through tactic graphs. Before I go into my content, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So I am a detection research director within the CTU here at SecureWorks. I run the team responsible for creating the detections that you see in our platforms. I have been in this space for a little over a decade, focusing on instant response, digital forensics, malware analysis, and detection engineering. So now that you know a little bit about me, let's talk about why this new technology was needed. So when you look at how threats have evolved over time, it can really illustrate the need for this new approach to threat detection. Now, back in the day, attacks were pretty straightforward. Attackers would just use simple means to get inside the environment, and they didn't really worry about making too much noise because by the time they were caught, the, they were already out of there and long gone. So if we like take this scenario, we can look at the attacker sending a phishing email, getting initial access to one system, and then moving through the network system to system, dropping payloads and malware like breadcrumbs. Now, in contrast, when we talk about attackers today, we can see that they use some of the same means to get initial access, so phishing email, then initial access. But instead of just moving system to system, they survey the network to identify high profile systems, such as a domain controller. With that, they can gain credentials. And with that knowledge, they're able to look through this network and find other high value systems using those credentials. Now, they do this for data exfiltration. After they're done stealing all of your files, they'll use their gained access to instrument mass deployment of payloads to all the systems in your environment. And you guessed it, ransomware. No breadcrumbs. These attacks are complex, and they're often quiet until it's too late. This complexity raises a challenge, because the complexity of these attacks means that it takes an analyst a longer time to analyze and respond to. So the higher the complexity is the longer the response time. And we know time to detection and response is probably one of the most important factors that in impact your environment during a compromise. Another issue is volume. Our company did a recent public survey where we surveyed SOC analysts and found that they have perceived a 60% increase in their workload. And this has led to a 71% burnout rate in SOCs. Now, with all of the tools, the lookups, and the telemetry that they need to go over day after day, quarter and quarter, we're only going to see this statistic trend upwards without a serious change in analysis capability. So we can infer with more events, there's going to be more opportunities to create alerts, which will naturally increase the amount of analysis time that analysts will have to take to work. Lastly, we have to find out what analysts are going to do when they actually see these alerts. And understanding how to action alert is a big task for analysts. With techniques such as living off the land, analysis can be difficult. They don't know whether something's legitimate or malicious at times. Is it true positive? Is it false positive? Is it benign? Or do they need to do more research? The ambiguity of alerts makes it hard to analyze and analysts need to spend more time doing their analysis in order to make the correct decision every single time. This increases analysis time as well. So if we pull this all together, we know that analysts need to make fast and accurate detections, but they have these three factors working against them. The complexity of modern attacks, the sheer volume of the attacks that they need to process, and the ambiguity of these alerts. These are all hindering the decision-making process and the response time of analysts today. So if we look at what an analyst has to do day to day, first, they need to get the alert. 
Then they need to review the alert to understand the context. Then they need to decide whether to escalate or not escalate. And then finally, they need to take action and initiate a response. And getting to that decision-making process is probably one of the most important tasks and where we can actually help with this using graph-oriented detection mechanisms. The faster an analyst can correlate the massive amount of complex and ambiguous alerts is the faster that they can reduce their workload and get to a response. So let's take a look at an attack from an analyst perspective to show how this would look in a realistic setting. So the attack that I want to example here is an Active Directory enumeration, which is a series of failed authentication attempts against an Active Directory. Now, this is something that we'd probably see in an attack commonly. However, we can also see this in a real non-malicious network from time to time. And it's important for the analyst to detect the malicious activity because it would mean that the attacker is inside their environment and they're looking around to identify usernames that they can use on follow-on attacks. So how does this attack work? Well, the attacker needs to gain entry in the victim network. Once they have had entry and they know where they are, they're gonna look around for an active directory. Then they're gonna take a potential user list and attempt to log in as those users on that list. They don't need to be successful here. They just wanna know the valid accounts that they can use for other attacks. Curbroot is a tool that uses this technique. In Tejas, we can see this represented by a series of 4768 events. Now, when you look at this, you can see that we have seen 60 of these events observed. And you, know, you might be thinking, hey, this is an easy detection. We're just going to look for multiple failed authentication attempts. However, it's not that simple, because an analyst would have to consider a bunch of things before they can make an accurate escalation here. First thing they need to consider, misconfiguration. Is there a bad configuration making these failed authentication attempts? Second, user credential changes. Has a user changed its credentials and their software has been trying to log in with the previous credentials? Lastly, there's always one person in the network that just can't seem to put in their credentials right. Is that user at fault here? Now, all those three cases are actually true positive benign cases, and they don't warrant a 3 a.m. wake-up call from your hardworking security analyst. So, it's important for us to look at this activity and identify unique patterns that we can hone in on to make a stronger detection. Now, the first thing I see is the same host, so we're definitely going to want that. The next thing I see is different username. So we're done, definitely going to want that as well. Now, an analyst would do this manually when they're looking at these events to determine whether it's something that needs to be escalated or not. But with a proper detection logic, we can apply this. And this is where tactographs come in. So the tactograph detector is within Tejas, and it allows us to apply detection logic to multiple events. This creates more complex detections against a volume of events, and it removes ambiguity for the analyst in their decision-making process. It features a correlation engine where it takes multiple telemetry sources and pairs them in real time for alerting. It also allows you to take a bunch of atomic alerts and group them with that tactograph to make alerts that warrant analysis. And lastly, it enables you to map patterns of malicious activity that can be found in common telemetry, such as user login attempts. So when you look at tactographs, you can actually visualize them as a graph with nodes and edges. The nodes of the graph represent the numerous events within the tactograph. And each edge represents the logic or criteria that connects those events in the detection. Only if all the con conditions are met will you see an alert for that activity. Tactographs allow us to express specific detection logic in a simple manner. So what logic will we need for our example? Well, with all the things that we were looking at previously, 
we can see that multiple 4768 events are a must. So let's say five or more of those, right? We want to pull in the events that have the same host, so same host. And then also, because we know how that attack works, let's say make sure everything has a different username that it's trying to authenticate to. So we're going to use that as our detection logic here. And when we put this in our tactic graph visualization, you can see that each one of those nodes represent a 4768 event. And the conditions of each edge are same host, new username. With this, we can express the logic of a possible Active Directory account enumeration attempt via Kerberos tactic graph rule. Congratulations, you just made your first tactic graph. So now when we look back in Tejas with the tactic graph, we only see one alert with all of the 60 events that we grouped with that tactic graph rule. This means that the analyst actually takes all of those steps and logic that they would have manually and bundled it into one unit of analysis for the analyst. You can see how this can really impact the analyst's ability to triage alerts using tactic graphs. We can express complex logic, so we use the same host, different username. We can group multiple events, one threat context, 60 events, as well as remove ambiguity. That alert was a high alert. In a common case, we might need a medium or low because we just didn't have the confidence. But with the detection logic, we got there. Tactographs help lower the workload for analysts and decouple the trending increase of complexity, volume, and ambiguity. This really helps combat the modern challenges of threat detection. And there are so many more applications for this type of technology in the Tejas platform. Putting the X in XDR, tactographs can help connect different data sources with high fidelity across the variety of telemetry that you send into Tejas. This tactograph actually shows a Windows management instrumentation event paired with a PowerShell process event confirmed with a PowerShell script POC contents. Now, that is three different data points that are used to confirm this threat. How is that for validation? We can also address the volume by setting a count threshold on the detections as well. In this tactograph, we alert on multiple different services being stopped and deleted. So we can detect something that is a legitimate action used maliciously without increasing the alert volume. But our telemetry isn't the only thing that benefits from tactographs. We can also make tactographs from our partner and alerts as well. So we can use tactographs to provide added value to our customers wherever the alerts come from. In tactographs, we can confirm that once a user has clicked on a URL in the email, that we see the process event for them visiting that URL via the browser. With over 150 tactographs created and coverage across all of Tejas's telemetry sources, we look forward to everyone experiencing the impact of tactographs with our platform. I invite you to take a look at the Tejas documentation to learn a little bit more about tactographs. I hope you enjoyed hearing about this amazing new technology, and thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, TJ. That was brilliant. Do you thank mind you. if I just ask you a couple of questions while I've got you in the studio oh, before you can escape? <laughs> um, so the first thing I want to ask is, just for your advice, if someone hasn't used this approach before with tactic graphs, I like there when you were saying, congratulations, you made it through your first <laughs> one. If someone's going, OK, this, this approach seems like it would really help alleviate the workload for my teams. What would you say step one is? How can people approach this? Definitely. So looking at the current alerts that they're seeing in their environment mm -hmm. and pairing, to, pairing them together to identify those chains that really make it malicious and confirm their suspicions, that's where you're going to see the value of tactographs. And you can sort of utilize that to make that pattern framework. OK, cool. So that's where you start. Can I ask if you can use event filters for detections and 
tactic graphs at the same time? Definitely. So event filters and tactic graphs work independently. So you can actually use either or for context in your detections. So therefore, you can have tactic graphs work at a certain severity level and the event filters at a different one, which makes it super flexible. OK, amazing. And then I just want to also ask, do tactic graphs map to this meter attack framework? Yeah, so all of our detections map to the MITRE framework and tactographs are no different. So all of our customers can enjoy mapping these threats to the attack framework natively in the platform. Your enthusiasm for this is really infectious. <laughs> you said, how long did you say you've been in this industry? Uh, a little years. bit over 10 years, yeah. And then how long have you been focusing in on this particular framework? Uh, the minor attack framework has come out, oh, I think, around five years ago. Wow. And we've gone through you know, the kill chain, the attack framework, and we've really covered the basis is when we're doing detection. So I think we have coverage for almost all of it. Yeah. And then looking forward, obviously, you know, this event has been talking a lot about your research, a lot about your expertise. When it comes to your next steps, what are your big priorities for the second half of 2022? And, and Definitely. Next year? Building more tactographs, being able to help our customers reduce the alert volume is going to be really important for us. We do a lot of uh, checking on our alerts to make sure that they are high fidelity, low volume, and tactographs are going to really help us get there. Mm -hmm. Is that one of the biggest complaints that your customers talk about? Is this high volume of workload? And like you said, yeah. they're calling up, you know, your experts at three o'clock in the morning. Would you say that's a big customer? Definitely. Complaint? I mean, it's across the industry. Alert volume with the amount of tools and devices that they need to manage, especially with BYOD, it's really important to make sure that we have a hold of all the alerts that are coming in from our various systems and correlating that to identify what really needs to be worked on. Yeah. So when it comes to that all important call, because sometimes it just can't be avoided making you know, that decision of we need the expert in here and it's three in the morning, but we've still got to get them in. Where would you say the line is? What events in that instance are still needed, even with all of this tech and these approaches? Well, the best part about it is that we have a really good security analysis team that will be able to identify when you need to be called and IR needs to be jumped in. So. I really trust those guys and really look forward to seeing how our detections help move that process along. Yeah. And do you have some insights into how these have helped customers you know, already with their approaches? Have you got a case study or a customer success story to mind that you could perhaps Yeah, share? definitely. There's many tactographs, actually, that we've built based off of a suspicious event that we couldn't necessarily make a higher critical because we just didn't have enough information for that one single atomic event. Mm -hmm. So pairing it with other events really helped us build tactographs that gave that fidelity mm -hmm. that allowed us to say, this is really bad. And you don't need to look any further. Let's action. Let's respond. Got it. TJ, I know I said I'd ask you two questions. I, actually, <laughs> I asked you like 10, but I just wanted to steal your time while I had it. Thank you so much. For that really oh, definitely. It was a pleasure to be here. Awesome. Thank you.